Okay, we're going to continue our discussion of applications of derivatives with what's called differentials. So last time we talked about using a linear approximation of the curve to find zeros of an equation. So just quickly recall for Newton's method, Newton's method, we had a curve, just any old generic curve, and we found a point on that curve and said we're going to try and find the zeros by taking the tangent line and then using that next, the intersection, the x-intercept of that tangent line as the next guess for our zero. That's called a linear approximation. We took our curve and found a single point on that curve took the slope at that point, and then made the equation the straight line. So we're going to look at other applications of this linear approximation or linearization of a curve by using the derivative. So we'll move on to a clean page here. Okay, so once again we're talking about differentials. And so a differential is an approximation of a change. Okay, so one more Quick illustration, we'll take our generic curve and we'll make it blue, okay. All right, so let's find a point on that curve, so right here. And if I, let's call this point C. And so the coordinates of this, that point, is the point C comma, well, F of C, obviously. All right. And if I take a step over, call it delta x, so there we're delta x, then I'll get a new value, this point here, which would be at the point c plus delta x, all right, that's our y value, obviously, and at a y, that's our x value, at the y value f of c plus delta x. Okay, nothing magical about that. So that is an actual change. Let me put my delta here. So this new y value is a delta y. We went up this much from our original y value. You know, very simply, our change in y was our new y value. Oh, forgot a parenthesis there. Uh, there we are. All right. So our change in y was our new y value minus our old y value. Our new y value minus our old y value gave us our delta y. Okay, and then of course our delta x, this line down here was what we started off with. We're just gonna say we're stepping over a small change in x. When we plug in that small change in x, we're gonna get a new y value. That's just the way functions work. Nothing tricky about that at all. So how can we use derivatives here and this idea of linearization or linear approximation? Well, I'm going to sketch a linear approximation here. So in green, here's my point, and take a straight line approximation to that. Okay, so now what we see is when I take a delta x step to the right, my delta y, or my change in y, it's not a delta y, my step up, is not the same as my delta y. Okay, so this part in green is my differential, dy. All right, so dy and delta y are different things. So how, how do I think of my dy? Well, we're gonna think about our definition of derivative. So recall that f prime is dy dx. And so I'm approximating, once I calculate f prime, and I plug in a, a step in the x direction, that's going to give me an approximation to how much my function changed in the y direction. So this actually gives us our definition of differential, which is on page 232 in the book. And so that is simply saying that uh, my differential dy equals f prime of x dx. Okay, sorry to scrunch everything onto this page, but this is the definition of differential. 
Okay, let's step forward to another page and look at a concrete example from the book. So this is example uh, two. All right, so this is just saying, let's compare, you know, delta y and dy. Okay, so I have a curve, y equals x squared. We know what that looks like. This is regular old parabola, something like this, okay? And we're asked to compare the delta y and the dy when I have a uh, dx of 0 0.01 and our delta x is the same thing. Delta x is 0 0.01. Okay, so to find the dx, we'll apply our definition of differential, which says that dy, well, let's take the derivative first. dy dx is 2x. Okay, which means that dy is 2x dx. Plug in our values, I get dy equals 2 times 1, because we're at x equals 1. Well, I probably should have said that. Okay, we're doing this at x equals 1. So we're right here, for instance, x equals 1, taking a tiny step over and seeing how much we change in the y direction. Okay, x equals 1, uh, dx is 0 0.01, delta x is also 0 0.01. Okay, so here we are. We're at uh, our derivative is 2x dx, so it's 2 times 1 times dx, which is 0 0.01, and pretty clearly that's 0 0.02. Okay, so this change right here in a differential form is 0 0.02. And again, what that means is I, I took a linear approximation to the curve. And so this change here, really this, from the blue line to the little green line down there is my dy, 0 0.02. So let's compare that with the delta y. The delta y is the actual change in the value of the function when I take a step over of this much. If my delta x is 0 0.01, how much did my function actually change? Not an approximation, but the actual amount. Okay, new page. Okay, so we have, again, x equals 1, delta x equals 0 0.01. So that means we're looking at um, our delta y, clear that off, okay, delta y, that's not a y, delta y equals, it's going to be the f of x plus delta x minus f of x. Okay, so this is the f of 1.01 .01 minus the f of 1. Okay, so the f of 1.01 .01 is, okay, what, 1.01 .01 squared minus 1, and quickly punching on my calculator, I see that 1.01 .01 squared is 1.0201 minus 1, so our delta y is 0 0.0201. All right, so that is, this is our delta y. Okay, so let's move on to answer the question is compare, you know, compare dy with delta y, and we see that our dy was 0 0.02, our delta y was 0 0.0201, so very close. And what does that mean though? And it's what we expected, by the way. We expected, and this is an important concept, um, how does dy compare with delta y? Since this is concave up, I expect that my linear approximation, all right, that's my straight line approximation. Since it's concave up, my linear approximation will underestimate the actual change. So, in this case, I'm just going to write that out explicitly. Concave up means that my 
dy is less than my delta y. And that's an important concept. How are dy and delta y related? Oftentimes it's just a relationship. If you're doing an approximation, remember this is used for approximations, one of the very valuable tools of derivatives is being able to do useful and uh, reasonable approximations. So this tells me that my approximation by using dy is a little bit less than the actual change in y. Okay, let's run through a couple more examples. This one is example 7. Okay, so approximate the square root of 16.5. Okay, use differentials to approximate the square root of 16.5. Let's get a visual of what we're talking about here. If you graph the square root of something, it looks like this. And if I come way out here to uh, 16, or 16, well, let's say 16.5. Okay, that's what we're looking for, right? So the square root of 16.5, well, this is my value. I have to come find that y value. Well, we know that it's going to be something near 4. Okay, so we're going to approximate it. We, so a part of approximation is knowing uh, something about how the function behaves nearby your point of interest. Our point of interest is 16.5, and we know that the square root of 16 is 4. Okay, so let's write this out. We have our function y equals square root of x. Okay, in differential form, or first we'll take the derivative, dy dx is one-half x to the negative one-half. So our differential then, dy, is one-half x to the negative one-half, so one over two root two, times dx. So our dx in this case, right, so dx is, well, it's how far are we from, how far away are we from a known value? Well, we know what the square root of 16 is, so our baby step is half. Our differential is 0.5. Okay, we're trying to find the square root of 16.5. We know what the, what the square root of 16 is pretty well. So to use a linear approximation, a differentials, a linear approximation, we're going to say our dx is 0 0.5. Okay, so let's move on. New page. All right, so once again, dy is 1 over 2 root x. I'll just put the square root down there, dx. Okay, so again, we know that the square root of 16 is 4. So that is going to be our point of interest. It's like the c on the first slide. We know what the square root of 16 is. So our differential is dy is 1 over 2 times the square root of 16 times the differential step, which we said is a half. Our baby step to the right is 1 half. So this becomes, what, 1 over 2 times 4 times, well, a half is, you know, 0 0.5 is a half again. So my differential, my dy, is 1 16th. And drawing our curve again to get a, again, get this visual of what we're talking about. I know that the square root of 16, the square root of 16 is 4. So when I take a baby step over in my differential, here's my linear approximation, by the way. Okay, and that linear approximation, by the way, tells us that we're overestimating because it's concave down. The curve is curving away, concavity is curving away from our straight line. So the farther away we go along our line, the farther away we over, or the more we overestimate the actual square root. Okay. So here we are, 16.5 is, uh, you know, it's around here somewhere. So following our straight line, our approximation is going to be, well, the square root of 16, our, our known value, plus 1 16th, which is just this value here. So our dy is 1 16th, so our estimate 
Let's change colors here. So our estimate for the square root of 16.5, that's approximately 4 and 1 16th. Now I'll just plug this into the calculator and find the square root of 16.5 to be uh, 4 point zero six two zero and four and a sixteenth four plus one divided by sixteen is four point zero six two five. Okay, so that's pretty darn good. In this very crude example, very crude well it's a perfectly fine example, in this very crude approximation our estimation is different, our estimate is different from the actual value by five parts out of 10,000. Pretty darn good. So we could see that's a very useful application of differentials is that we came up with a really good, very simple approximation of the square root of 16.5. Well, why is that handy? Well, sometimes you need to find these things and you don't happen to have a fancy calculator by your side. So you could use a linear approximation, right? This is just a straight line. We used y equals mx plus b. We used, um, we had the slope. Where are we here? We had the slope of this line, right? F prime is the slope. And we had a point, uh, x and f of x. So that gave us, we get the, not y equals mx plus b, we have the, the, the equation of the line in point slope form, and so we could find any other point along the line, and that is our linear approximation. We took a point on our curve, took the tangent line, and estimated another point on that line. Okay, one more quick example, new page. This is going to be related to example three in the book. I'm not going to go through the whole, whole thing, but I'm going to show you another useful application of differentials, and this is something that's crucial, by the way, in engineering and physics and manufacturing and things is finding errors. So this example involves a ball bearing. So here's a spherical, it's a ball of a given radius r. And so the question is, what is the possible error in volume if there's an uncertainty in the radius? Okay, so we're gonna say that there is a, um, you know, a differential in the radius of, say, 0 0.01, whatever units this example is in, probably centimeters. Let's suppose this is centimeters, okay? So what's the possible error in volume of our, of our ball bearing, our marble, which would become important in manufacturing? How much um, material do you need to make all these? Um, of course, volume is crucial for any kind of manufacturing consideration, ball bearings, need to be very precise if they're going to serve their purpose because they're for lubrication and to keep um, high-speed machinery operating without overheating. So let's recall that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And so when we're talking about error, what we're saying is for a, uh, you know, a small change, you know, a small change in r, how is, how is that going to change, or sorry, how is that going to affect the change in volume? Question mark. Okay, so, well, we should know by now that means we're going to take derivatives. Let's look at dv dr. So this is exactly our setup for differentials. So dv dr is, well, 4 thirds pi, just a constant out front, times 3 r squared. Okay, power rule. Um, of course, these threes are going to cancel, 4 pi r squared, and so our differential form is our differential, our differential change in volume is 4 pi r squared dr. Okay, so this just tells us that for a, uh, a dr of, say, 0 0.01, and for given a radius of, say, well, let's see, look into the book, um, r of 0 0.07 in this example, we see that we can get a change in volume of, you know, our dv winds up being something like, 
zero point zero six one five eight. This is actually in cubic inches. Crazy English units this book uses. Um, metric units, of course, are superior. Cubic inches. Okay, so this is our differential, our, our expected error in the total volume of our ball bearing. And you can go ahead and read example three. Um, the total error isn't always the interesting point. It's the relative error. Um, but you can go ahead and take a look at that. And I'll stop here for now.